it is second pick dire for mvp phoenix so looking like a slardar game now what do you think about slardar plus dazzle opening i like the slardar for sure what would you pair with this now though do you want to have i like picking up one support now just I to leave mind. it open up. I wouldn't mind the Dazzle so much. I think it's good. It's always good together with uh, with Dazzle. Yeah, I even mean, I've always been a, just I've always been a big fan in, in oh, all teams oh, yeah, I play. Yeah, Doom. Vegas yeah, Doom, of course, he's there. But yeah, I've always been a fan of the Slaughter Dazzle. It's a very good pairing in the lane phase. They make sense together. Slaughter likes to dive. You amplify even more with the damage difference. And uh, yeah, they just work really well together. To so it looks like Vega were expecting them to pick up the Doom so they can pick up the Lone Druid for themselves. But maybe they also wanted to have maybe a Slardar for themselves as well. Maybe not expecting MVP to pick up Slardar. But this is, I guess this is both you know teams getting what they want in the first phase here. Slardar, Doom for MVP, they really want that. Puck, obviously for no one. And then Lone Druid here for Mag in the offlane. So it's, you know, stock standard for everybody. I, I would favor just... It's really hard to say who you favor right now, just because MVP's on Dire's side Vegas and they can take out one hero from Doom, but it's really hard to get Doom off onto the puck a lot of the times, and Dooming a lone Druid isn't the best, so we'll have to see what he wants to do. I can already say that I like Vegas opening a little bit better, purely because it's... Well, it's both in their comfort zone, I do realize that. Yes. But I feel like it's more in the comfort zone of Vega, as, a, as opposed to, like... It's still a comfort zone of MP Phoenix, Ten but just a little bit more for Vega. I don't know. I like it. I think, I mean, they're the heroes that we Five talked about remaining. that if no one gets a good game, especially on this puck, we saw him earlier today, probably one of the most farmed pucks I've ever seen. Uh, we saw Mag yesterday on Lone Druid having an exceptional performance. And they actually they actually banned the core Venomancer that we saw MVP people pull, pull out yesterday. So, no, I, I really like uh, I really like the opening of Vega a little bit more. I do, yeah, it is fairly... Strong for MVP Phoenix as well. Disruptor removed. Zioma's not going to be able to play that one. I think Vega should ban Phoenix next here. Or, or pick it up for themselves. But then if yeah. they don't have first pick, second phase though. I think MVP do. So maybe... MVP does have the first pick yeah, after this. So yeah. it's, I think Phoenix is a very hot pick right now for both teams. Um, what else really? I guess Dazzle's still in the pool, but... There's just too many supports Vegas in the game that are really good. That you, I don't think it's the best just to ban out supports right now. You have to, yeah, you have to ban out the cores. Obviously, Sioma's disruptor is scary to play against. FN's clinks. Yeah, I think there are a lot of supports right now. There's the dazzle. There's winter wyvern. I think still very good. Uh, Vengeful spirit could be good for Vega right now. There are quite a few heroes. I'm thinking um, for Vega, as they indeed uh, ban out the Phoenix, as you suggest that they should. Vega yesterday in this lineup, they picked up Lone Druid for, uh, I mean, uh, Ursa for FN. Would he fit against the Slaughter here as well? I, I don't think so. I don't think so either against yeah. the Doom. I think CK is honestly the best pick here for Vega. Not now. They can mm -hmm. maybe save it for yeah. later. But save a CK pick for later. Save it. Uh, but... Yeah, they should just get one of the supports now. Now that they know against the Witch, Witch Doctor is so annoying to play against if you're a lone druid. Oh my he god, really is. that is not going to be the best. But you're forced to ban out the Venomancer and the Phoenix, kind of like Five as respect, and this because they w do way more on the lone druid bear than the Witch Doctor does. Reserve time. Um, so, so what do we think of uh, of the Witch Doctor pick? Is just a safe one for MVP Phoenix? Yeah, just a go-to support from MVP Phoenix. They they pick this up whenever, whenever they can, and it works well with the Slardar. And it's obviously good against the the Lone Druid. MVP's just draft is so scary, like so scary right now because they have two frontline cores that are so tanky, and having the Witch Doctor heal on top of that. I'm trying to figure out how Vega are going to burst them down. They're, they're trying to figure out, too. The one thing that uh, MVP need to be a little bit concerned about is if they're going to pick more melee heroes up against that puck, we are going to see no one eventually get that Aghanims. It usually comes around the 25 to 30 minute mark, I want to say. Yep. And when that happens, they need to think how are they going to deal with that. Because it is a very long duration on that coil and the, the break, obviously, if you exit the coil. I know you said you liked CK for Vega Squadron. But what do you think about them going back for Medusa? Hmm. 
Uh, I think you, they're going to wait with it, their... Yeah, you save, it, you save your cores yeah. for last. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't mean right now, but, but uh, I mean like just in general against the lineup that MVP Phoenix have now. For now, it's it's okay, but Duzo can be scary against Slardar, and they also have a lot of things to just break that Lincolns. They can kind of, yeah. you know, go yeah. into the fight, go in and out right now, and then... Crystal yeah, they have, they have fight damage. It's it's not out of the question at all. It's just yeah, it's it's really hard for us to say because we don't have so much information yet. So yeah, speculating. Exactly. It's all. It, I mean, that's all yeah. we do, right? That's our job. Speculate what the teams yeah, do. Yeah, but you have more. You know, if you have a base for it, then it makes more sense. So uh, what do you make then of the Crystal Maiden? What does she uh, is what she, what is she the base for? I think it's just to kind of help no one out in the mid lane a bit. The the aura is gonna help him. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the Crystal Maiden rotate into the mid lane at some point, maybe with a smoke to kind of help him out. On top of that, we've seen how much the freezing field can do in fights and also against these heroes of MVP Phoenix, like the Slardar, the Doom, when their BKBs wear off, you know, later on in the game, that CM when she hits the level 11, level 16, mm -hmm. I'm assuming these games are going to go later on. Yes, so unless there's a massive outdraft, mm -hmm. which, you know, for now it seems kind of uh, kind of steady, but yeah, yeah, things could happen, things could change. But yeah, so for now, the Maiden is just I hear that can kind of help them, I think, go into the late game quite well, actually. Yeah, they need some kind of magic, extra burst magic damage, and it's AoE now for the CM. So I, re I really do like it, as long as you can get off some good, you know, it doesn't even have to be long duration CM fields. As long as it's like two, three seconds on the cores, it, that'll do a ton of damage if you get the, I guess, right procs. Could be unlucky uh, hitting elsewhere, but Invoker now picked up for MVP. Yeah, I feel like if you... If you <laughs> If you actually just, you remove the, the names, you know, Vega Squadron, you remove the tags, <laughs> and you just saw these two drafts, I feel like you would just know this no, is Vega you? playing against MVP. Oh, that's really nice to have that healing ward now against the Doom. As long as they can keep it alive, that could be another counter to the Doom. So, and it also adds a lot of pushing power, but well, you, you said yeah, you said that, that maybe Vega didn't have enough burst to deal with, uh, or damage to deal yeah. with the Doom and the Slardar. That's what my is that is that still the case? The Juggernaut does not fix that problem. Juggernaut and uh, Crystal Maiden together. Do you still think that problem exists? Uh, they, these guys are so tanky. As I saw last game, the Doom was not dying at all. It mm. took like three or four heroes to kill him. I'm worried about the burst damage coming out, but it's a lot of sustain coming in from Vega now. I really like that pick. And I really, it's like saying two things, right? I love the CK because uh, as long as you get your Phantasm off and you win, they don't really have that many counters for it. But the Juggernaut, it adds a lot more um, possibilities in team fights. Whereas like CK, if you don't have your ultimate up, it seems like you're useless. Whereas Juggernaut, you can burst like you're saying, Shiver. You can burst down the heroes with the ultimate if it can get off on them. Uh, we'll have to see how it works out, though. I think Vega can make it work, but. I just love MVP's lineup more just because they're tanky, they're mobile, and they can always be in your face. But that's the same thing for Vega too. They can do the same thing. I like the, the chin ban here from MVP Phoenix. I think that could have been very difficult for them to deal with. They don't have any E push right now, so Vega could have just pushed them, I think, with the Lone Druid, with the Juggernaut Healing Ward and the chin. Yep. And uh, I kind of want to see, I wouldn't mind seeing a Dazzle come out of MVP here. So for for Vega, how greedy can they be with his last pick? Because the Chen would have been show me Enigma decently greedy. I'm actually yeah. I was actually thinking about Enigma. Enigma. Yeah, I think that would be good. Could see that work. Yeah, it gives you a mech carrier. You don't have a mech carrier right now. Uh, you can't get the bounty hunter for a mech anymore. It's banned. Chen mech Five banned. You need extra survivability. More push is never bad, you know, for this early game. Oh, okay. We would have never guessed that, guys, so it's fine. I think Dazzle, like you said, Black is just... And there's no chance this was a random, right? Huh? I mean, they picked it at the zero, zero, zero. Oh, the reserve time. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> they might have just right. ran him. I don't think so. Oh, so it's going to be a support, support doom. I don't mind this so much now that they have the Spirit Breaker. Hmm. Uh... Yeah, just the Tide Hunter. I think he's not really gonna die. If you bring a fair fire into that lane, you bring a lot of region on the Tide Hunter. I think the spin and the maiden, they don't really kill you. They're gonna have to have the Spirit Breaker down there as well. If all three heroes are there, then the Tide is kinda happy because the Doom is gonna be farming in his safe lane. They're gonna be fine. I think the Slaughter and the Witch Doctor. 
Which team do you favor? You gotta mention one before we send it, it over to like our commentators. sounds like he's going MVP. Yeah. Uh, I'm also gonna go MVP because right now it has to be a perfect game, I feel, from Mag on his Lone Druid and no one. If they play a perfect game, I feel like Vega can win, but I just feel like MVP's draft is a little I better. think they can play the perfect game. What do you think? And uh, what do our commentators Yeah. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Grand Finals here at the We Play Season 3 LAN. I'm Odie Pixel, I'm drawn by Draskal, and we're ready to get ourselves into Game 1 between our two Grand Finalists, of course, MVP, going up against the side of Vega. Let's not beat around a bush, let's get ourselves in, and Andy, let's give us a bit of a lowdown. Vega, final pick with their lineup, grabbing that Spirit Breaker, and MVP respond with the tie, and wham, bam, go! Let's get ourselves into the action, whoa! There we go, oh, listen to the hype, it's incredible. I'm, I'm ready, dude. I'm ready. I'm ready. My body's ready. I think Vega are ready for the rematch as well. I think the I think they grew a lot like the panel was saying. I do actually like the Spear Picker quite a bit here from Vega. I think it's nice to have a hero like that who can just lock somebody down for an extended period of time. You know, Slardar, he's that hero who really wants to get in the fight, pop sprints, and just be able to get off multiple crushes, auto attack, and just keep, you know, trucking on somebody until you kill them. But Spirit Breaker adds so much disruption to that type of hero. And if you get locked down for too long when you have sprint active, you're going to be taking a ton of extra damage and can be pretty devastating. So we'll see how effective Vega could be with it. Should help them pressure the lanes as well against the Invoker. Like a Spirit Breaker and a CM ganking it should be a fairly easy rotation for the side of Vegas. So we'll see how much pressure they can apply. Absolutely, and uh, no further ado, let's get ourselves in. Let's get ourselves associated with who's on who this game. So from left to right, on the side of Vega, we're going to be having Shoma the Slayer playing on the Crystal Maiden. The Spirit Breaker, that final pick here from the side of Vega Squadron, that's going to be Solo charging across the map. Puck, of course, no one, one of his signature heroes. We're going to hopefully see an incredible performance again from him today. And Jug, it's going to be played by yeah, FN, the newest nice. member of Vega, to recently having a great, great amount of fortune with the side. And Mag, the final man there on the off lane, his lone druid, some of the best performances that we've seen, uh, at least over the last patch. So again, we can expect reliable performance from him. On MVP, Qo, he's going to be the man on your slider. They uh, certainly love this pick, and uh, we'll see what they're going to be able to achieve with it this matchup. Uh, we'll be supported up by Febby on the Witch Doctor. Their uh, side of MVP's final pick, Fareb, on his tide. We've seen it already this tournament. We're going to see it again here in the Grand Finals. Looking forward to see how it pans out. And the mid lane, MP on his Invoker. And finally, without any further ado, don't forget Dubu. He's in the jungle on the Doom. And uh, here we have it as the lanes kind of settle out and cement themselves. Nothing too out of the, uh, out of the ordinary here. And all in all, I guess the, the thing to kind of take away is, is the fact that uh, both teams uh, with a member in the jungle at the moment. CM just at the moment frost buying up the creeps. And of course, Dubu over on his Doom just uh, doing what he can, trying to get these early levels. Well, the, there was one thing we did kind of not take note of so far is uh, the bear on Mag already died, so that's the second bear. Granted, MVP didn't actually get the last hit because it got taken by creeps, so it's still not the, the greatest thing in the world for him. Still able to control the lane a bit. I think that Vega have a little bit of an advantage during the early stages of the game just because the CM being unaccounted for means that if Shioma wants to try to gank mid with his Spirit Breaker charge, it's a lot easier for them to do that than it is for the Doom to successfully rotate on mid. So Dubu, I think, you know, if he gets a good creep, maybe with Scorched Earth, he can go towards mid and try to apply some pressure, but it's a puck. Yes. So it's, it's very, very hard to pressure. On the other hand, MP is actually going Quas Wex. I was kind of curious what build he was going to opt for in this game, considering the rest of his team. But I think that it's nice to have that kind of tempo control when you know that you're going to have two of your cores farming quite a bit in this early game. Oh, we see bottom lane at the moment. They're trying to go in onto Ferev here. Solo, Shoma, and FN closing down on the boy. He's level two. One in the crack and one in the anchor smash. Trying to juke it out through the tree line. There comes the anchor smash out with the charge forward from Solo. Frostbite as well. I mean, they're taking their time here. He's incredibly tanky, Ferev. They should have a chance of finishing. He's going to have another anchor smash, but it, yeah, he's gone. And first blood there for the side of Vega. They will take him down, the three of them, and get, and get themselves that first kill on the board. Mid lane, MP, just taking a bit of a ball to the face, but he's going to be fine. Uh, but yeah, that, I mean, forever we saw that, it takes them a long time to kill him. But uh, with the three of them down there, they certainly can have a shot at it. And all solo with the charge onto mid, eyes onto MP, no one moving in. Hasn't yet got a point in the silence, so it looks like it'll be nothing more than just a little bit of harassment onto the Evoker. Yeah, he just charged because he picked up a regen. He cast charge like immediately just to make sure that he would still have the regeneration effect and get the cooldown back without any cost. So just a little bit of efficiency there, applying some pressure. I think MP also already popped his salve as well. And he is obviously not going to be going bottle, so no one already having his. He's, he's doing all right here, actually leading CS by quite a bit. Only at the three minute mark already ahead like five and a couple of denies, which isn't too bad. But we saw the strength of the CM is that 
because of the fact that you're in the jungle so often, it's very hard for MVP to keep track of you because no hero is really focusing on the, the Radiant side of the map. Like, you're not seeing a Bounty or a Chen or an Ench, like, focusing on the safe lane. They're just going with their own greedy picks. So the CM, in my opinion, is actually working out very well for them thus far. And we're looking at, uh, at the other lanes at the moment, Tupu, he has smoked up out of the jungle. Ready to see if he can find himself a, a successful gank. And the question is, where is he going to put his attention towards? As you already mentioned, the mid lane is going to be a tricky one to catch out with no one on his putt. No one continues just to try and harass this invoker back and, and is certainly having the superior time. 21 for 4 against the 14 for 2. Dubu, he's uh, positioning himself at top, waiting for Mag to come out. And all oh, this could be a good time to go. Dubu now with the wraparound. Febby coming forward, pops on the Maledict. He's got the follow-up stomp, but the chain stuns are there into the bash. Great control from MVP. And they'll take down Mag on the Lone Druid. Very nicely done there by the Koreans. Oh, he doesn't have a bear either. That's really bad. His bear is on cooldown. It must have done they must have done enough damage to make him resummon at some point. So that's around a minute and a half where he's not going to be able to really do much of anything. It's very painful for Lone Druid to lose his bear this early on. Absolutely. It's it's gonna be interesting to see what Mag does do. Is he gonna go back up there or He's got to try and find something else we can see. I mean, it looks like uh, he's just going to make a movement. Uh, he can try to jungle a bit, I suppose. On his own? Yeah, I mean, you can just like auto attack and wait for your bear to come off cooldown because he can't yeah. go to lane without it. Yeah, that's the thing. So, yeah, as you said, this is going to put a huge stint in Mag's growth. And uh, we'll see how much he can actually do it there on his own in the jungle. Dubu hanging around the mid lane. Not a huge amount that he can do, really, to, to, to help this invoker find a kill onto the puck. No one. He's still doing fine. Bottom lane, the charging onto Ferrer. Play Fury from FN to follow through as well. They're rather deep, but the TP reaction will come in. It's going to be Febby on the Witch Doctor now. FN, can he get himself out of this one? Chomps through the trees with the Quelling Blade. He's got the free path out. So he will be fine. As we see Vega just playing very, very aggressively onto this tide. It's getting to the point where it's going to be a lot harder to bring him down now. Halfway through level four, nearly onto five. Two in the smash and two in the Kraken shell. So it is. It is. Getting to the point where it's going to be a very tough kill and oh, top. Shoma and Dubu just finding each other off. Frostbite, but Dubu's got the score stuff to get himself out of there. And, uh, looking at the two carries, 31 for 5 on QO, 30 for 11 on FN. Uh, both of them finding even amounts of farm at this point. It's going to be an interesting matchup because on paper, like the Slardar versus Juggernaut, Jug is good if you can catch out the Slardar with an Omni because the Slardar doesn't really have any way of dealing with you during that, but Outside of just the Omni Slash, Sardar is really strong against Jug because even when you spin, if you get amplified, you're going to be taking a ton of damage, even more so than what you can deal with the spin itself. So it's going to be a little bit tricky for FN during these fights, making sure that he can find the proper opening and not get, you know, either doomed or maybe he gets like EMP'd at some point, loses his mana, can be pretty devastating as well, and obviously amplify and things like Witch Doctor Ward can be fairly devastating too. A lot of there's a lot, I think, this game down to a couple of things. Like the initiation, who gets the better jump? And if MVP has good dooms on the proper targets, like perhaps the Puck, we already talked about the Juggernaut, I think those are the best two. And then coming out from that, I think, is who's going to... or That's how their this fights are going to be decided. Solo hit. He came around right up past the Dire Ancient spots out for Rev. But uh, obviously not going to be able to do anything about it on his own. Uh, again, finding himself a regen, but he's just going to now, but he's not going to go straight into a charge this time as there's not really an opening to find anything across the map. QO now with that arm lit done, so the Slardar as well. Getting to the point where if they want to try and do something about him, they are going to have to send a few up there. FN is getting a bit of pressure off the tower on the bottom lane. He's hit his six, Omni Slash at the, at the ready. If anyone wants to come in, obviously even with that, it's uh, not going to be much use against this Tide. Forever now level six, Ravage as well. They'll need a plus one if the Jug wants to try and make a go onto the big Watermelon. But, uh, I mean, at the moment, seven minutes in, fairly passive play from both sides. I kind of expected with the way that, that they both have these these jungle, uh, jungling heroes that, that can kind of back up and farm. Uh, MVP the ones to start to put a bit, bit of a stronger push on top. They've got three moving in, ready to chip away at the tower. We'll see if they can come back with any kind of response. But at this point, it looks like uh, the side's just happy farming up across the map. I mean, that tower isn't particularly useful to Vega. It's like not good for Roshan. There's nothing really in that area that you want to protect too much. So I think it's a little bit risky unless you want to commit a lot of heroes to defending. And the thing is, like your Juggernaut can't really fight right now either. We are going to see a charge mid though. Let's see if they can give this a shot. They've got both No One and Shomo around. If they can stagger this correctly, Dream Coin into the waning rift. But they're already the TP reactions are quick. They're fast forever. Thinking about the ravage, blows it out. Oh, 
He does it beautifully, catches no one after the orb out. One more touch of the book should do it. He's falling himself out, getting off to the side, but the Salai Blast flies through. Great play from Dubu there, coming in with a shockwave at the final minute and finding that kill for MVP. And boy, did they work for that one. Great use of spells. I actually don't know if the Ravage did damage. I think the Tornado and the Ravage hit roughly at the same time, and neither of those spells actually hit until you touch the ground. So I'm fairly certain one of them just got negated, and I think it was the Ravage. But it would have hit him if the Tornado didn't, so it was kind of like a, a failsafe. It's like, okay, well, if I don't hit him with this, I'm going to hit him with the next one. They do get the kill, although he had phase shift off cooldown. I think he just was really scared he was going to eat another auto attack anyway, but the, the Seder Shockwave ended up taking him out. But still, nice rotation there from MVP. Oh, and look at this bottom. FN's trying to jump in with the Omni Slash. There's two of them, though. They'll tank it. And now a TP is going to be coming in from MP just in time as well. Frostbite onto Febby. They'll find one on the other side of Febby. The EMP coming out. Uh, Dubu trying to get the Infernal Blade down onto the Jug. One more touch will do. The Tornado end up finishing him off. And now Solo, he's going to fall as well as MP picks himself up a double kill. They're chasing down the lane. They've got eyes on Shoma. Can they close in on this Crystal Maiden? Still a good duration of the Scorched Earth. And MVP, they're ready to dive. The Koreans, they're coming for you with Shoma. And MP's going to block him off here to the north with the right clicks onto the Amplify. They'll bring down a third of the member of Vega Squadron. Great play and fantastic aggression from MVP on the bottom lane. And they are just getting completely ran out. I think as soon as they realize that no one TP'd mid, as soon as like that puck shows, you can't really ever expect to have any help, right? Because he's the one hero on your team that can control. Solo dies with FN while they're under the tower after they go for the two kills. So you don't have a coil, you don't have your mid player there, and MVP just punished them so hard by just realizing that one little move. Very nicely done. And I think this is going to be kind of the standard for what MVP want to play. Oh, Vega trying to go in. MP, nice tornado, and EMP just says, no, Cal, you stay back, son. Solo not going to be able to get anything done there. But worth noting, of course, no one. He has not been turning up to these fights. He's not been reacting himself, but that's given him the space, the farm, to find that Blink Dagger. And also kind of nice to get himself an Invis Rune here as well. And in fact, the Courier actually could, it was going straight up mid onto the Dire side, and, and Dubai actually gets a slap on it there. A little bit of Miss Courier Micro that, that nearly cost that point to Blink Dagger. I don't know what was going on there. Yeah, if he lost his Blink, that would have been actually brutal. Because that's the one item where Vega can now look to take fights on their own accord. They don't have to, you know, wait for MVP to run at them, which is not really the way that you want to play this game, I think, if you're Vega. I mean, they're trying to get a little bit of time so Mag can like, recover and whatnot. Oh, oh, QO, he's been caught out by the Invis Puck. He's going to play himself around it, though. They can't kill him. Yep, indeed they can't. With that arm, that QI far too tanky, and he slivers himself away. That's actually... It's not really a good sign to reveal the blink with that kind of play, not get a kill. And now it's just on cooldown, giving MVP time to decide if they want to react and like go for their own counterplay, because they, they do have Ravage up. Unfortunately, for is a little bit low on mana right now, so he might go back to base, or he might just wait for another round of Arcanes. But I'm... I'm still kind of waiting for the, the Spirit Breaker to show how useful he can be in the fights because a lot of the time during the early game, MVP weren't showing a whole lot on lane and it's very difficult to just justify charging off cooldown when you know you're not going to be getting kills. So in that regard, Spirit Breaker is not the best in the early game situation for this game, but I think once the... Oh, Mag, no. Absolutely savage there, roaring back MVP, but they don't care. Straight back in onto the bat. Yeah, fair and enough. themselves uh, an easy 300 gold pickup. That's a little bit rough for Vega at the moment. I, I don't know if they actually have the tools to take a, a team fight against MVP. Because Doom is available, so is Ravage. And the Slardar, after getting this tower in a little bit longer, he's going to have Blink as well. MVP just seem to be hitting their timings a little bit faster. Have it. Indeed. Moving around as a group, MVP finding the playstyle that they love to roll with. FN's been given a lot of space down bottom, and it is worth noting. Top of the CS board at the moment. In terms of the net worth, as we can see, Juggernaut, he's right up there, 5.6k. No one on his putt. Coming into the jungle with Mag as well. They spotted out QO. They're coming up with the charge, and now jumping in with the silence. Following through with another strike. The Dream Call drops as well. Not a chance for this Slardar to live. They'll find the kill there. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, trying to go in onto FN. He's been doomed up. The MP connecting as well. He's out of mana, out of health. And one more slap there from Dubu. Will bring down the jug. No one trying to find something in return. The charge onto MP. Shoma gets the frostbite onto Dubu. Holding him on the sidelines with the paralyzing cards from Febby. Bouncing between them from the low ground. Jumping the death but from the high ground. Shoma, he's trying to go for the ultimate there with a the freezing field. But death Ford forces Shoma to back up. Febby's on the run now. The silence, the charge through from Solo. Bash down onto the Witch Doctor. Three dead on MVP. And Vega, they'll take that trade quite happily 
after MVP are the ones to go in hard onto the Juggernaut and Vega, and and of course to point out the Spirit Breaker. I mean, you said you wanted to see what he could do in the fights. That is exactly what the Spirit Breaker needs to do. Yeah, because of him, they're able to secure the kill on the Slardar, which kind of kicks things off. Because before we saw only two heroes, it's not really enough to kill QO at this stage in the game if he's on point with his toggles. Oh, Mag. Is he going to go for this? I think he is. And QO is ready to slither in. Savage roll for the Tornado, controlling Mag. In goes QO with the crush. Bam! Our number one for MVP, seven for five. I think it was one of the first seven and a half minutes of this game that was only from one for one, but a further six minutes in, and both teams really stepping up the heat. Yeah, Kuro's going to have his blink in about one or two more creeps as well, which means more aggression coming out from MVP, if you could believe that. I think that Spirit Breaker is going to work out nicely during the mid-game, though. Slardar has a really, really tough time dealing with him, so maybe even at some point MVP decide they want to doom the Spirit Breaker just so the Slardar has a little bit more reign in the team fights. I still think that Puck and Juggernaut are great targets as well, but like if the Juggernaut's already used Omni or something like that, it might not be worth necessarily casting Doom on him. So I, like, I don't... Uh, yeah, yeah, he has to cancel that one. Absolutely. That is two ham. Two beef, you could say. Yeah, that as well. Uh, top lane, Mag coming back in. The farm game, Blightstone Midas, 2.5k on his way to the Radiance, considering uh, the amount of bears that he decided to, to offer up to the Korean overlords, he is actually going to have a decent timing on the Midas Radiance build by the looks of it. Yeah, if you look at the other members of, uh, of Vega, as we might see, are they going to go Roche or are they going to go fight? I feel like they want to look for a pick first. They're kind of split here. They were just kind of walking around back and forth deciding what they want to do. Okay, so we'll just be Roche. Normally, I think MVP like to go for the pick off, but because of the fact they see the puck sitting mid, or they saw him a second ago, and they do have like wards in the offlane and whatnot. They, they have a pretty good idea of what's going on. So this should pretty much go uncontested from the side of Vega. It gives MVP another kind of boost of momentum. They can just go straight for the tier ones after this because the tier one mid and bottom are still alive. And again, I, I don't know if Vega are really ready to fight yet because you were talking about Mag and his Radiance timing. It's not quite there yet. He needs probably another, I would say, five minutes, maybe six, before that's going to be done. And Vega's lineup is very very reliant on him having that Radiance timing. Yeah, it really is. Uh, I mean, just going into a full 5-on-5 five five against MVP's lineup at this oh, point. Oh, they're just going to run at him. Okay. Absolutely I keep terrifying. forgetting this is MVP. Yep. They're just going to fight. This is how they roll. MP is coming in. He's looking for uh, for the first break off if he can, but Sherman just about to get himself away out of harm's, harm's way. And in fact, grab oh, blinking for the tornado on point from MP. They know that the Crystal Maid is there. She's going to try for a TP, but the cold snaps down. And MP, fantastic play on the Invoker there to catch out Sherman. That was a really, really good tornado, I must say. I, I was a fan. I think it's one of those moves where. If you're MVP, the way that you think of it is, we don't have to give anything up. We can just make them go back, and then we can pressure anyway. Like, we don't have to make the trade, because what happens in that situation if they go for the mid or bottom tier 1, is Vega end up getting their own tier 1, and they don't want to just give away something where they feel like they can just maintain that extra map control. Because the dire tier 1 is still relatively important, you know, and it allows access into your jungle and allows Vega to make a little bit more little more happen on the map so I, I think that it's fine for MVP to do that now because they can just pressure all the lanes they have top pushing in they can group up behind 4 of mid if they want to who already has a blink dagger on the tide and ravage available or they can just head bottom let's see where Fabi, Dubu and MP want to try and make the moves it looks like indeed as you suggested bottom is is the way they want to go QO jumping in FN smartly looking for the straight TP out he is going to manage to get himself away uh, Vanguard now actually being uh, picked up by Doobie on the Doom and uh, not something we always see as the first item in a Doom's build. It's really good against this team though. Like Lone Druid, Bear and Lone Druid, Juggernaut is primarily a right clicker. Spirit Breaker wants to be inside of the fight. I think that he may even go finish the entire Crimson, just given the fact that Vega have three predominantly right click based heroes. And then you have the Puck of course and the CM, but... We'll see. He could just go back for something else and glide as well. Really nice as well. Look, Dubu coming around. He's got eyes on this. The pings are coming through. MP needing to get himself in position on the Invoker. See if they're able to get in, but already FN just heading back towards the mid lane. Three members of MVP. Febby now joining him as well here on the high ground of the Radiant Jungle. And MP and Dubu will be the first to move in. MP with the opening. In comes the Tornado. Unfortunately, not going to be on point this time. FN able to get himself out up to the north. Febby be able to get to himself down a nice bit of deep vision between the tier one and tier two and solo actually thinking for a charge he's going to cancel it though as uh, Q is actually coming straight for him and i think that 
And it's Boots Southern. You can see the vision that MVP have around this bit of the map. Very nicely done. So, you know, if FN tries to farm up on his jug behind, you know, what he feels to be safe, MVP, they're going to be quick with the reactions and moving in as five men and looking to jump him uh, when he's vulnerable. Yeah, MVP would like nothing more than a fight right now. And there we go. I mean, Kira, he just jumps in behind a tier two looking for Solo. Solo's on his way back to baseball with the Amplified down. The Death Lord as well, they'll get it. Omni Slash coming for onto Febby and FN will find a return kill. Kira is fairly low himself. Crushes onto FN. No one's there. But it looks like FN's just going to back up with no one on the puck. They don't want to try and jump back in. And QO getting away with that one himself, but it does cost the Witch Doctor's life. Uh, trading support for support. I think, honestly, at least from the Golden Experience Exchange, looks like a favored MVP, which is a bit surprising. But I suppose they are farming like more creeps, whereas MVP are the ones who are trying to play aggressive and have secured Roshan. But I guess in this early stage of the game, when Roshan experience a gold is nerfed, the value of the enemy heroes isn't really quite as high. So Radiant's now done a mag, actually got it very fast. Mid lane coming in with a dream call, dropped onto Dubu, moving in with Mag as well. Oh, and they jump in from QO, gets the crush off onto two. The Doom's been dropped onto FN, they'll turn, they'll take down the Juggernaut, they will lose the Doom here on this one. But now MP with the Tornado, EMP gonna connect onto Mag. Mag's gotta run, he's gotta hide for the cold snap. The Anchor's passage for it blinks in, takes down Lodrid and Narao. No one jumping on the back lines, finds the Invoker, and now Shoma looking for the ultimate there with the freezing field, but it's not quite enough. He's getting beat down by QO, double kill for the Slada. For Rev, is he gonna go now? No, he's gonna be able to live and turn around there thanks to the voodoo restoration of Febby and now the free of MVP closing in onto the Spirit Breaker himself they'll find themselves a fourth a QO at the same time just jumping in deep finds the puck it's a full team wipe and MVP just absolutely outclassing Vega in every single situation now 20 minutes in oh that fight was so brutal if, if they didn't have Aegis I'd say Vega probably walk away with that easily like the fact that QO comes back alive ends up getting the rest of Vega killed mainly because no one sees that they're chasing, and he, look for, he looks for an opportunity to potentially get a pick off on maybe like the Tidehunter, for example, because he was a little bit lower on health. But QO, he just throws an amp out, and then he says, okay, that target's pretty much dead. And then he just decides to turn around and go for the puck, which no one was not expecting at all. Just gets caught by a crush, two auto attacks, and he's just done for. You can't really take the high physical damage like that. And this is going to, I mean, these team fights are just going to get harder and harder as well for the side of Vega. The fact that Ferev picks up the Greaves. I mean, QO, oh, obviously we've been following him. He's been having an absolutely ridiculously good game. 5-1-5, five five, Armlet, Reaver on top of that as well. I mean, if you're Vega, what do you look to now in terms of turning this one around? Have you just got to try and continue to get the farm onto this Juggernaut? I mean, how far does FN need to go before he gets himself in a position where he's actually going to be a real threat to MVP's lineup in these fights? I mean, I think as long as he has ulti, he's fine. He just needs to be able to get into a position to actually use it. That's why I was talking about the importance of initiation. If the Juggernaut gets in, gets an Omni off and kills like a support or, you know, does a lot of damage to QO and QO is forced to run away, Vega can walk away with that fight win for sure. Oh, QO jumping in onto the Crystal Maid and he's going to find himself a freebie. And on the back of this one as well, FN. Just blade-fearing himself away forever. Jumping forward, he does have a Ravage. We'll see if he's going to use it. Here's the Tornado to and there's the Ravage. Only going to catch up the Juggernaut, but it's enough. That's the big kill. The follow-through doom to secure FN's death. And no one jumping in with the Waning Rift, the Gorb on to four, but MVP at this point don't care. They've got the Voodoo Restoration. They're going to be back up very, very nicely in the Health Department. Thanks to the Greaves as well from Forever. And it's two more deaths on Vega, and they're just unable to find anything in return. MVP just seemed to be in the right place at the right time. Forcing the spin out of the Juggernaut early, catching him with the Ravage. QO has always been in position this game. Seven, one, and five. Like, this guy is going completely insane. And the amount of sustain from MVP. He's just... gonna have heart pretty much, right? And like, yeah, 40, 40 gold, he'll have heart completed. I don't actually know if Vega have the damage to kill him unless it's like everyone goes on him. You're gonna need a good CMLT, the Spirit Breaker is going to have to use Nether Strike. You're going to coil him. You, you got to drop the Kitchen Sink on this guy or he's just not going to die. Oh, we'll see here as well. Mag. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. 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 Not, not like this. Mag jumped on Q out of the Death Ward as well. No <laughs> chance for Mag. He's gone just like that. Shoma tried for the TP out. But again, MP with these tornadoes catching heroes out every single time. Febby's going to be the one claim with the, with the double kill there. And now the rest of Vega, they've just got to be careful. No one. They've got eyes on him at the same time. Solo up top, being chased down by Prem and QO. Solo, he's going to go for a charge out. Let's see if they can get the cut off. Bebby and MP 
Trying to get themselves round to catch out the Space Cow, but it doesn't matter for Evan Kuo with the slow chase down, the beat down, the slap down, the bash down. Kuo finding himself another, and no one. This is Planet. Should be able to play around Dubi, but MVP, look at them closing in. Just a full five man ready to chase down this puck. We'll see how much they, they want to commit to trying to get this kill. I mean, no one, of course, incredibly elusive, but we've seen him do this in games before, where he'll just create as much space as he can, Tornado. Oh, it's so close. Didn't quite have it that time, MP, but it was a very, very good attempt. Nonetheless, MVP finding himself in a position now to just find Rochelle. I think we're seeing a very strong case for why a lot of teams just first phase ban Slardar against MVP. That hero has been doing so much for them. His chasing potential is almost unlimited because of the duration of sprint. You're basically running at almost haste speed for the duration. You have Blink Dagger. You have an insane amount of minus armor. So not only you, but the rest of your team also does a huge amount of damage. I, I think next game going forward, unless Vega have first pick, I think they have to ban this hero. Because MVP just know how to play it too well. They gave him a very easy lane. He goes Armut straight into Blink, doesn't even finish Treads, and just starts fighting. And he's not done yet. I mean, Kuo is, is coming up here on his own. He's ready to finally jump onto someone. No one deep in it, trying to get himself out. Well, I mean, Kuo tried just in case he could catch the puck out. It's not going to be the case. Kuo just trying to assert his dominance this game. And, and I exactly think he's done he's so. Yep. Yeah. 8 1 7. As you said, it's going to be very interesting to see how this is reflected in the next draft of game two because of Vega. Right, literally getting sort of litherine crushed this game. I think everything just kind of fell in place for MVP as soon as the Slardar got his Blink Dagger. The team fights just seem to always favor them. The last... Oh! Ho -ho! Goodbye, Puck! Ravage to the face. There'll be another strike. The Omni Slice coming out as well, but with the Crimson Guard, they'll live through it. Now with the Death Ward laid down, Shoma going that across the hill. We'll take down the Slardar, doing huge amounts of damage for the side of Vega. They've already lost two. MVP there on the retreat by Kuo. He's back up and he's full in there with the ult. And he's just going to bash down, beat down on the bear, trying to walk his way off, but it doesn't matter. He's down for 300. Easy gold for Kuo on the Slardar. Laying down the Amplifier as well. There's been a buyback from FN. He goes for the Omni Slash, and oh, GG's just called there. You Omni Slash, you go set to Ben, which Doctor, it's over. You just give up for that. And MVP game one, 23 to 8, 25 minutes in. What a performance! I mean, Vega. They need to come back with a with a totally different game plan in game two if they want to have a chance of taking a game against these guys. Uh, they just got a band slaughter, honestly. That, if you look at the way that they drafted. Juggernaut, we talked about in the beginning of the game how he's kind of 50-50 against Slardar because if you get amped and you have spin, you're just going to get right click to death, you know? Like, the Slardar just does way too much physical damage to you. You can't ever spin defensively, and that's one of the biggest tools that Juggernaut has that makes him good. Yeah. Is he